If the sun was replaced with a black hole of equal mass, what would happen? Well, we'd all surely perish along with every other planet in the solar system as we're sucked in and out of existence, right? No, nothing about the orbits of the planets would change at all. You see, black holes don't suck. They're not the cosmic vacuum cleaners that many imagine them to be. At a safe distance, gravity behaves in the same way for black holes as it does for any other massive celestial body. With the strength of gravity, depending on the mass of an object as well as your distance from it. And in this case, neither of those things have changed. So the gravity felt by the planets would remain the same and we'd now be in orbit around a black hole. Pretty cool, literally. We'd all still perish by freezing to death. Thankfully though, the sun turning into a black hole just isn't a possibility. For that to happen, our little star would need to be over 20 times more massive than it is. You see, when a star that big reaches the end of its life, it can explode into what we call a supernova. All the mass of the core is crushed down into a single object that's so unbelievably small and dense that it might even be a singularity, something that is infinitely small and dense, and that causes space-time to warp around it to the extreme. As a result, you're you're left with an object with such unfathomable amounts of gravity that not even light, the fastest thing in existence, can escape its pull. All we can even see of a black hole is the sphere of darkness that surrounds it, from which no light can escape. So it's not really a hole at all, it's a sphere. It's a black sphere. Eh, black hole just sounds cooler. No argument here. I'm just happy to know that the sun isn't nearly massive enough to form one. True, practically speaking. Theoretically though, anything could become a black hole. Schwarzschild? Schwarzschild. The foundation of our understanding of black holes, although they weren't named that at the time, began in 1916 when Carl Schwarzschild found an exact solution to Einstein's field equations of gravity. While fighting on the front lines of World War I, it's called the Schwarzschild metric, and it's useful for a lot of things. Not the least of which is that this nifty equation can be derived from it. Plug in the mass of any object, the other letters are just constants, and it tells you how much it'd need to be compressed in order to become a black hole. Specifically, it calculates that object's Schwarzschild radius, the distance from the center of the black hole to its edge. Which, by the way, has one of the coolest names in all of science, the event horizon. The surface of the sphere of mathematical doom that surrounds a black hole. The boundary across which nothing can possibly escape. The literal horizon of events. When people speak of the size of a black hole, they're typically speaking of the size of its event horizon. So how big would our black hole of equal mass to the sun be? Well, we can plug the sun's mass into the equation and we get a little less than three kilometers, six kilometers in diameter. So that sun replacement black hole that all the planets would be orbiting would be the size of a small town. You know what's really cool? Despite being a prediction of Einstein's most famous theory, most scientists, including Einstein, didn't think that black holes could ever actually exist. They all agreed that the math checked out, but they assumed that this was just an abstract mathematical possibility, not something that nature would ever actually allow. But as it turns out, sometimes math makes a lot more sense than even our senses, and nature is a lot wilder than even the brightest among us give it credit for. Over the decades, our understanding of the physics of stellar collapse has advanced a lot, and it wasn't long until science to started taking the concept of black holes pretty seriously. And then we found one. And then we found more. In one of my favorite scientific events of all time, we actually listened to two black holes colliding together and producing gravitational waves as they rang the fabric of space-time like a bell. Today, not only do we know for sure that black holes exist and that they're freaking radical, but there's strong evidence that they play an integral role in the formation of galaxies. And we even think that there might be a supermassive black hole at the center of every large galaxy in the universe. So not only are they real, it's very possible that without them and the important role they play in the cosmos as we know it, we wouldn't even exist. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center reached out to us to ask us to help celebrate Black Hole Week. So we did! And if you want to learn more about black holes, you can do so by heading over to nasa.gov. Didn't have to ask us twice, right, Forrest? Hey, Evan? What's up? Is it weird that we're acting like we're talking to each other right now? Like, people are gonna know this is edited, right? Uh, no, man. We scripted this to sound like a conversation that's happening between us. 
right? I'm sure it'll be fine.